as the field makes their way down to the eighth pole. It's still Capo Kane. He's trying to take him. Gates of wire in the Jerome, and he's opened up a two-length lead now. Capo Kane, he wanders to the middle of the track past the 16th pole, but he's three lengths in front of Eagle Orb and comes down to the line. A five-length winner of the Jerome, Capo Kane. And that was Capo Kane winning the Jerome Stakes. And this is Dylan Davis joining me to talk about the Withers, where he will pilot Capo Kane again. And Dylan, I have to imagine you were pretty pleased to pick up that mount for the Jerome. Of course, Ed. Thanks for having me. Uh, he's an, a very exciting horse to ride, and I'm excited again this weekend to ride him. And I imagine, uh, I'm not sure how much you often talk to the trainer before the race instructions-wise. I'm thinking with this horse, probably not to go, not a lot to go over in terms of uh, where this horse is going to be when the gates open. What's your uh, planning as a jockey, though? Are you looking at what other horses you expect to be around you? How do you handicap the race when you're on a front runner? Sure, yeah. Um, just uh, looking at what other speed horses are in the race, uh, if I need the lead or if I can get a comfortable lead or if my horse can uh, sit off the pace. There's a lot of different scenarios uh, with the speed horse, but uh, more importantly, breaking well and and making sure my horse is comfortable where he's at. Do horses warm up differently if they're a, a speed type versus if they like to relax out of the gate? Sure, yeah, they have a lot more energy. Uh, usually if you want to break well or, or go to the front with a horse like that, uh, you would take away from the pony. I did do that with uh, Capo in, in the Jerome. Uh, but usually they're very more energetic or, or more springy, I guess you could say, <laughs> uh, are on the bridle. Uh, usually like that, they would show some signs. So uh, after having gotten a feel for him both before and during a race in the Jerome, um, I'm sure you'll be hoping for uh, a similar feel to him when you prep for the Withers. Sure, sure. Um, I didn't really get too much uh, experience on him until I rode him the Jerome. Uh, Harold was telling me a little bit about him. Uh, he did, he really just told me to ride my race. Uh, I did watch some replays on him beforehand at parks, got a little idea of him and his little quirks. Uh, but he broke sharp that day and he was very comfortable on the lead. So I'm probably going to try to do s similar to what I did last time. Now, as we're talking, uh, the field hasn't been out for too long. Have you had a chance to peek yet and get any ideas of how the race might be run and won by Capo Kane? Yeah, so I, I did take a uh, quick peek at it. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be doing a, a similar uh, or close to similar as I did last time with him. Uh, there is uh, one horse in there that Pletcher has that Kendrick's riding does show some good speed, but that uh, is coming from Goldstream. That, how, that course is pretty quick. So uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to be on the front or going to be laying second if, at worst. Uh, but I'm Looks like I'm going to do something similar to to what I did in the in the Jerome. Of course, uh, the big one of the big questions on the Derby trails horses going a route of ground. Uh, do you feel like you had enough in the tank for the added distance to the Withers? <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, he uh, was definitely length lengthening in stride that last eighth of a mile last time. Uh, he did excel through the wire. I was very happy, and even on the gallop out, he was still continuing. He did not want to slow down. Uh, he was very happy with that race and, and that distance. Even then with the gallop out, he was very, you know, full. And I felt like I could have did a lot more that day. As a rider, what's it like to, to be on a live one on the Derby Trail? Oh, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot of hopes and dreams. And this horse, I'm hoping that he can get me a little bit closer to the Kentucky Derby uh, than my previous chances and. Uh, I'm just very excited, so I'm just going to do my very best to get there. And uh, Harold's been doing a great job with him so far. I've been keeping in touch with him over the phone. Don't really get a chance to see him that much. He's been training over at parks. But, uh, you know, just very excited and just trying to stay very professional and, and just just try to get the job done, do, get the job done, and, and, and we'll just go from there. Absolutely. Well, Dylan, really appreciate the time. Uh, exciting run in the Jerome, hopefully one in the offing in the withers and I uh, have to ask uh, any progress getting that ridiculous coupled entry rule changed yet? <laughs> oh, with my, my brother-in-law and my sister. Yeah. Have you, has he said anything about that? Or uh, they? He, yeah. They, they, they said they were going to fight it, but uh, because it would take a few months, uh, 
they said it's not worth the the fight because they're going to be going back to Laurel. So uh, they they are in a disagreement. Don't have to worry with, about with it there. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, well, it's pretty it's funny when Dave Grenning posted that. Yeah, it was uh, one of those things in racing. Well, I know you're focused on the race at hand this week, and really appreciate your time. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for having me.